بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to you tower after a long break. MashaAllah, I'm so happy to be around you again, MashaAllah, and our prayers for you and your family, inshaAllah, Aziz. Uh, today's topic is uh, quite, uh, it's not usual ones, but today we're going to talk about Islam and youth. The Amadir Jai Yong Chalemera Ase, Islam Shate Tade Kibabe Shomporko, Ebon Kibabe Gonishto Tade Ase, Egulen Yamra Allah Khorbo, inshaAllah, Aziz. Ebon Amadir Shate Aske, a topic of Jinnah, could be. জরুরি বক্তার জন্য যে আমাদের সাথে যারা আছেন আমাদের অতিথি ইনশাল্লাহ আমাদের সাথে আমি পরিচয় করিয়ে দিই প্রথমে অন মাই রাইট উই হ্যাভ ডক্টর মইন আহমেদ মহমদ ভাই ওয়েলকাম টু আওয়ার শো থ্যাংক ইউ মাশাআল্লাহ ইউর ইউর এ প্রফেশনাল ইউর এ টিচার ইন কুইমিল ইউনিভার্সিটি রাইট আই এম এ রিসার্চ এন্ড টিচিং অ্যাসোসিয়েট কুইমিল ইউনিভার্সিটি মাশাআল্লাহ এন্ড এরোস্পেস এন্ড ইঞ্জিনিয়ার মেকানিক্যাল ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং ফ্যান্টাস্টিক হোয়াট ডু ইউ থিংক অফ আওয়ার টপিক টুডে ইসলাম এন্ড ইয়ুথ ইটস ভেরি current day contemporary topic and it's probably one of the key aspects in the which is very useful in the society in shan i'll come to you in, in a minute on my left we have uh, azizul kareem so i come he's an accountant by profession and also a trainer so yeah. azizul bhai welcome to our show zakallah thank you for inviting me sir bhai no no fantastic nice, um today's topic is islam and youth so you guys are uh, doing a lot of good things about islam you know teaching islam or, or, or engaging people in, you know regarding islam and mashallah a lot of our brothers and sisters from different faith are also connecting with you guys because of your dawa process so we are talking about mainly about muslim youth in the uk so we have a issue in in uk a lot of uh, the knife crimes going high the gun crimes and issues of behavior on amra jate musliman amader reflect khorenna in those behaviors so what do you think in your eyes are the issues for our young people in the uk It's a very uh, vast subject to obviously make a comment, but obviously few items I would say is one of the item is parenting issue. For example, uh, teaching at the home. Teachers do their best in the school. They try utmost best. They can control their child within their education level. But I would say the morality level and the, the level of ethical consideration and also the muhasaba in Islam, things has to be come out from the, from the home. And that's why I would say the not the children the parents needs to be educated about islam the ethics and culture about and the life of yeah profit. but what could uh, uh, parents do when the kids goes out he's into crime he's into drugs so what could they i know they play a big role yeah. but most of the time you will find his friend his people around him and 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 so how do we can we just blame parents no 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 i i just mentioned because this is one of the key okay. items and other items could be Uh, we should engage with them in a friendly manner so that we know the relationship between uh, hus- I mean sorry uh, uh, children and uh, uh, parents basically sometimes the p- children can't talk to them in a manner that they'll be friendly for example we live a big space especially in our community uh, children find difficulty to communicate because he thinks oh what's going my to my father say on this issue so he rather stay quiet and do the crime but if you look at other communities they have an open bonding between the parents so even if he wanted to do something he will communicate with the parents and in in that case the parents come and do a an intercession with that sort of things so minimize uh, the consequences coming ahead i agree with you actually um when by um parenting is the issue but recently we've seen in 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 Um, there are a lot of knife crimes going so high. Recently, we've seen a few murders as well regarding knife crime. Among, um, in our community, we can see the, the drug dealings and drug users are increasing at the same time. Um, what other issues do you think in our community or affecting Muslim community, especially the youth? Generally, youth as a whole, uh, I think, um, way where they're mixing. Uh, Obviously, I do agree. Uh, it all starts from uh, Tarbiya. Tarbiya starts from home. It uh, depends on how you're brought up. But then again, uh, after a certain age, the mi- interaction of the child becomes more with the outer society than 
at home. And hence, uh, what kind of mixes they're getting, where they're mixing with after school, in school, and the teachers and the role players in the society and the community as a whole plays a lot to do with how a child is brought up. And eventually that kinds of plays into when they go up to whether they're into drug abuse or um, gang fights, including knife crime or all sorts of other crimes. Um, where current day, uh, the most of the, uh, I think these days the knife crimes has probably surpassed uh, knife crimes beyond the other uh, major cosmopolitan cities like of the New York. Um, uh, obviously we cannot deny the numbers, uh, but what we could do is probably look into how we can engage our youths into more productive and proactive engagements. It could be to do with community building works outside the schools, because obviously schools only give you uh, educational backgrounds, uh, which is very important, fundamental, for anyone's upbringing and um, raising. But at the same time, we need other uh, engagements to do with the society. Uh, it can be from a um, religious perspective and other perspective. In the Muslim society, as you've raised, or in the Muslim community, I think the religious uh, denominations, including the mosque, imams, or local scholars, or leaders, can play a massive role, uh, which is to do with, because uh, ideally a Muslim child or a youth is expected to frequently visit mosque for prayers and other com community purposes. Okay, so we'll come to that regarding solutions in the right. next part. I want you to find out the, what are the problems at the moment. So uh, identifying the problems, so one of them is... Uh, disengagements from the um, proactive groups, than the disruptive groups. So the mixing primarily, to my understanding, is um, people into drug abuse or gang fights or other crimes are probably mixing with people who have has had traits in drug abuse or gang fights or in gangs rather than mixing with community building stuff. Do you feel also a language is a problem for uh, uh, this generation of young people? does have an influence big time because communication starts with language. So if I'm not able to communicate myself, I'll choose the person who I'm more easy to communicate with. And language can play a very big role, uh, but I would believe that people who are born or have come, in, come here in a very early stage, they would hardly have a language um, communication problem. Uh, in terms of mixing with the society, maybe, if they have moved from a different part of the world in a uh, rel relatively recent time, then language can play a big role, uh, which may sometimes put off students or people to engage with the right community and end up in the wrong community. I wrong if I could come to you now, <coughs> you know, like we're talking about languages, it's the beha how we speak with our young people, right? Actually. So at home, I'm talking about the first and now we're the third generations. Among, if they don't speak English, Okay, so if we use those language or body languages with our young people, all do's and don't, you know, like all the time, don't do this, it's affecting our young people because whenever they go out, they usually, everybody allows them to do everything. And when he comes home, you say, no, 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 in everything. You can't eat this, you can't sit like this, you can't talk like this. He's already, you know, infestrated because of too many no's. So, it's not a solution. Well, it's a very vital point you mentioned that uh, we shouldn't make home as a prison. Uh, it should be balance of entertainment and balance of learning as well. So uh, I would say is educate our parents first. I, I, I try to blame more on parents than the children because the children is, is in a, I mean, if you look at the teaching of Prophet Peace be upon him, that every children is born in a fitra on a, in a natural state of disposition, which is in a good way. It is their parents who drive them. So majority case to children, if you direct them in a good way, they would be do. So the most cases, the, ch the parents, they need to go understand the awareness. I think the awareness can be uh, generated by a few means. One of the means should be engagement with the neighborhood. Law of parents, they also love, they talk about back home and love stuff, but they don't engage with the neighbors. And they're living in this country. We have a social life here as well. So who is my neighbor? Is sometimes people think, oh, uh, this James is living next door. I don't want to talk to him because he uh, drinks alcohol. But it doesn't mean that James is a bad person. You see, we can engage with him in in a 
obviously we, we can engage with him in a, in a manner that obviously we're not going to drink what he's doing but we can have a discussion with it how can you solve the issue because he he can help you sometimes your children may be in danger he can say to you mm, okay. you can uh, you can, he can recommend something so problem is we stick within ourselves and we're living in a country but we're living ourselves in a bubble rather than engaging ourselves into the social activities things like that make the uh, social platform opening it and so that the children can see the world is quite big as well at the moment we restricted him it is like you know whenever I talk about halal and haram <laughs> which doesn't give a food for soul and mind you know mm. so is this is one of the case another things I would say is <coughs> Uh, engaging them, the children, uh, majority case, they don't go, you'll hardly see them engaging in activities. Those who, I know some, some guys, they do martial arts. They're actually engaging their time on martial arts, so they're not going there. So the parents, those who are going there, I would say majority children, they don't have another uh, similar platform where the goodness is there. They don't have. So they have only option left to go there. Yeah, I'm not going to in problem to do that. I'm not sure if I use it in our kids, with our kids. Tell me what I'm saying. Shop the gula makes the differences, yeah. isn't it? Shop the gula. I could have a kid or so good to go to me in those words. The, the sweeter words we use is definitely better for our kids. Absolutely. I'm not with the or too far enough now. This, this is I, I take the blame as well. So, if you can even do this part with my kids, people, the kids we love, we say this is our future. It is our future. It is our future. It is our future. It is going to be my latte and everything. But your behavior with him is like uh, uh, non friendly at all. I mean, you're almost like only you're the one who's doing it. And he hates you because of this. So, do you know? What do you think? Um, I don't know. As he said, I'll probably drag it from his point. Uh, to some extent, I would blame the parents more than the children, uh, because obviously it all starts from the house or wherever you're brought up from. Um, and Tarbiya starts with communication, language. So if I haven't used a sweet word... I know it's prone to be blamed, because I'm one of their parents as well. <coughs> it's not easy to deal with kids when, they, when you're teenagers. But some of the kids, believe me, some of the kids can be really awkward. Okay, they can be really, I don't know, twisted. I mean, you do your best, still he never satisfied. He's, I want this, if I don't get this, I'll do this. The demanding, and if, they, if you don't make this. I had a lot of calls from before a few uh, sessions ago. Like, there was a man called in and said, I'm sorry, I'm but now, I mean, I do raya. Thala mai raya, thala gamiya. Amar buwe. Jodi amra attack kore right. The ita khudiya kita wilo amar. I spend money and everything else. Well, shokol case na, but there are some cases in that level. Yeah. A lot of young people actually bringing in uh, um, their friends. They're not supposed to bring it at home. Could be uh, uh, female and anything else. Ma for kuchu khwar na ekhon araf na bichuni. So they all crying and you know relying on Allah. Please find a way for me. I don't know if you have a situation where you have a lot of people who are blaming the war. I don't know if you have a life for saving the life of Lacey. And that boy or girl is punishing me. Punishing me in front of the world. That whatever they're doing, people probably think I haven't done my part. So, how do we balance these two things? When I, when I was talking about terbiya, terbiya, it does not necessarily mean only sweet talking. Obviously, sweet talking is what. Um, takes the vast majority of the communication, but there should be harshness depending on the extent uh, the interaction goes to. So, if there are cases when things are not working with the sweet talking, yes, you have to go. Well, there you have to go around the sh uh, gray areas and use those areas. Uh, so, at times when you need to be strict, you be strict. At times when you need to be harsh, you be harsh. Obviously, not take the stick up and then no. why? Obviously not. But there, if you take in examples from the life of the Prophet, uh, you'll find many examples where he did recommend terbiyah, but he never asked you to get the heat stick and hit them. But obviously, there are ways you can take from the black and white to the areas of grays and shades where you can go change things depending on how your child is behaving. Uh, I wouldn't disagree that there are exceptional cases when no matter how much you do, uh, the child is not ready to take it. 
and this only increases with time. Achha, so bhai, I'm not sure about this, right? Yeah. Afnan, you have an example then. Imagine you're at home. Afnan, you have a I'm not sure about this, I'm not sure about this, but I'm not sure about this. Afnan, you have a question about this, but I'm not sure about this. Afnan, you have a question Imagine you've done something, you've been out a lot. They, how did they, sh they discipline you? Um, and Aga Buchunna, now you actually appreciate what they've done. I, I, I have probably realized throughout the process, but I've probably realized a lot more than well, after I've moved out from my parents than I used to be with my parents. Uh, I think spending quality time, not only time. So we may be all at home, but that doesn't mean we are all spending time. We may be spending time at home, but not quality time. Quali with quality time, I think, um, doing stuff that my, my, <coughs> my dad would be doing a lot of stuff with me. And well, I, we are two siblings. So with me and my younger brother, like building stuff, we'd build um, planes, boats, uh, small fans in summer. We'll make uh, potteries at home, something my dad learned from his school. Uh, we would buy a um, lot of toys but we'll break them <laughs> to make new things uh, with my dad. Uh, this is something we like, I mean, me and my brother like, so my dad kind of found out, okay, this is something interesting. We would use our weekends, sometimes late evenings as well, to make stuff, and my dad would uh, treat me with, like, if I would get things done, like my homeworks, he would treat me like, okay, once you do this stuff, we'll, uh, in the rest of the evening, we'll make stuff for tonight, or then, we can next weekend we'll decide uh, during the weekdays we'll decide okay what we're going to make this weekend so this would kind of keep us busy um, so you have to plan first what you're going to break first and then fix it <laughs> we had to kind of. break first and fix it what was your uh, mom's role then? Uh, mom's role was um mom's role mom spent time uh in a different manner as to my dad uh, mom was kind of my um she would look after the basic stuff so my, whether my food was okay, uh, my studies were okay, schools were okay, everything, all the fundamental things were falling into places. Uh, interaction with mum was more than my interaction with my dad, but the interaction with my dad was more interesting than the interaction I had with my mum. Obviously mum didn't know how to make stuff as my dad knew, but obviously, and I was probably more used to making or building stuff. and. So we would more interact, but there was quality time we, I used to spend my, with my parents. And this is something I realized that this kind of played a lot in terms of my upbringing. And I'm sure many of my friends did in different ways. <coughs> uh, many of my friends' parents Most did in their own way. Good. And um, quality time, spending quality time is very important. This is uh, one of the key factors in your cool idea of upbringing. Thank you for sharing right. that. It's really interesting. Um, I, just, I know you're very, you're, you're very close with your dad. Uh, because I know you for a long time, and you always talk about him. I feel they have to share for him because he said uh, a very amazing thing: quality time. I feel a bit like Louis because when I show my umbra, I show the my babai zara umbra is the umbra when I hold umbra time enough to lay them. I mean, guru asi, show my dira, rumo asi, is it enough? But engaging with them, physically engaging with them, and doing something with them is in this time. Show my umbra, I show the hortam pari na oto ba umbra in this time busy na when I show my. Afnar kaise kuno kichu monofore ne? Afnar the engagement with your dad that ekhon afne mani kubi lagay zaman you missing. I don't know. It could something our parents are probably watching. They could pick up something from that. So my my father has a business of pharmacy basically. So got a big pharmacy. So on vacation time I used to give him hand, and I used to sell stuff. You know, like and have a very close knit bonding with my father. We used to eat together as well. And to be honest with you, I like his um, word. I was waiting for the things word of coming here from his mouth because everything, I mean, you will hear something new, very interesting, some stories, some jokes, as like he will give, uh, he will make some parables and give you a education as well. Give us an example, any, uh, any, anything. Uh, I mean, uh, so uh, he used to, I mean, lo lo long. But you have a story of no for any. Um, I remember, the examples I remember are, something uh, he said yesterday about the turban. Oh yeah, I mean, so year to year, yeah, Bangla khoi le, je, je, apna knowledge ta ki apna fagri bodo itna means don't Show pretend you. something that you are not there, right? And keep yourself, you lower your gaze down. So, I think uh, this is a serious, sincere statement in any level. Achha, no, like, 
What about he will say something new? Because I, I used to find interesting these things because he actually give the food for the soul. It's not about something like he will bring something which is extraordinary. Okay. When you, you don't say, find when you say soul, what does it mean? What do you mean by soul? Oh, I mean, for example, um, uh, say for example, when you have interaction with someone, you're going just interaction, right? But you're not finding something special. But when you when you go there and you know that you will receive something special, right? Some sort of special teaching, some sort of special company, then of course he's your friend. Of course, I have a distance in my father, obviously in relationship, but still uh, the way he taught us, educate us, and uh, my mother played a very vital role as well. So I would say my household is a role-based relationship. For example, my father looked into all this finance. He made sure we've been looked after through the finance. My mother, she is, I would say, she is, uh, it's not because of my mother, she is, uh, one of the greatest women, I would say, because the level of effort she put into our brothers, like my uh, rest of the bro brothers uh, are accountant as well. So, I mean, her hard work. Uh, she actually, sometimes she, uh, so much, whole day she worked on... Okay, can I ask you something? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that would suit our viewers. I'm not going to go to the money. They want to, it's good to control your kids. It's, it's not a bad thing. But over control for your hale, for you taking to an ashmo ekitafna, Tarashawash Tahena, Tara Mani, Boy Boy Tahema, Fikitazika, Wachtazika, or Bakilafra. You get me? So Afna, I guess, say, well, always in that they over control or did they give you a space? Uh, obviously, uh, show everyone's life, or uh, you are say, but I'm not on ashmo. I used to play excessive play. I used to go ground. I used to play excessive time, tired with them for some time. So I'm not like Hela like Ela Horta. But sometimes you know excessive jishuma kurtam, jishuma tired ya exam ya yo kurtam, khafur subur bura ya itam. You know like Bangladesh amra yo asina, ona shuma control asina. But tara ela kurtam flexibility dida, but ona shuma amra violate kurtam. So ona shuma tara matta. But then again we back to the relationship again. So we always keep the tie anyway with the friends. Okay, after that is another share kosa, na share my part. Amara shole, I'm the second generation probably in in UK. So. Amar bela, jekta ami khoytam sirem. Jamar bela, jumana funar. Amar abo three kids. Ye thara loge story share khora. What about watching some movies or something like this? As a parents, we look for reasons or excuses. Come, come, come. Let's watch it together and stuff like that. In the beginning, it wasn't easy at all. Believe me, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy because they would say, "No, I don't want to watch it." So after she lejo, after muko khoydiya, no, I'm jekta mna. Mu tu mar dekho. Oto ba oto. So I learned. Uh, I went through a course. A parenting course and actually when I went through and I finished it off then I knew how to do it I knew mm. how to do it so I could go through that line and say shall we do it together yes so I think we most of us it's not easy to straight away mm. because you actually are, are raising your kid and that when that kid say to you no in few things this will break your heart unknowingly you break your heart in every every sections and it's not easy to come back it's not easy to mm. lift yourself up but if you know how to deal with those issues, then you will find an amazing place to be. Honestly, it's an amazing place to be. It's a challenge, but it's, it's like you're winning the challenge. Wow, I'm doing well. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. That's good. That's probably good. you saw in probably the other day, my two of my kids came to sh uh, the same class as me. Yeah. Because I broke that chain down. That's right. So, Alhamdulillah, dear brothers and sisters. I just would like to uh, add you one thing, obviously. Uh, within this relationship within the parents and the children, I would say, uh, within the brother as well, so we part another part which is in in family household is a brotherhood and the sisters. They play a vital role. For myself, I think I would heavily supported by my bro eldest brother as well. My uh, eldest brother, he played a big role in my my future. I mean, my goal uh, to be where I'm, I am now. So uh, my bro brother-in-law obviously she helped as well. And also within this, we have a company like a good company, li limited sure. company. And I think that would whole package for sure. anybody to look okay. into in the, um, the family structures. We'll, we'll go for a break and come back. Dear brothers and sisters, we were talking about the issues and we were talking about uh, things we're facing at home and outside. So after the break, we'll talk about the Islam affects our kids, uh, how it affects. So we'll talk about it, inshallah, who has this. So stay with us and see you after the break. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah, dear brothers and sisters, welcome back again. We were talking about Islam and youth. I think we have to say that 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 otherwise they wouldn't be in their knife crime, drugs and other things. So we have to say that 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 we এই ইসলামের এফেক্টটা কিভাবে তারা ওপরে ফোরে রাখি বল টক এবার দিস ইস্যু ইনশাআল্লাহ উই হ্যাভ টু এক্সপার্টস ইন ইন আর সাইড তারা আপনার দাওয়া স্টোল হল কই না ফ্রেন্ডস সো দে এনগেজ উইথ থাউজেন্ডস অফ পিপল মাশাআল্লাহ আস এ ব্রিলিয়ান্ট থিং অলসো ফ্রম देम ফর মাশাআল্লাহ নিয়ারলি 17 পিপল ডান শাহাদা উইথ ইন দিস 3 অর 4 মান্থ সো আমি প্রথমে চলে যাব আজিজ বাড়ি কাছে আজিজ ভাই আপনারা দেখলে যে আমাদের ইয়ং ছেলেরা বাচ্চা অথবা বয়সাল যারা আমরা আছি আমাদের মধ্যে ইসলামের কোন চরিত্র অথবা আপনার যে মধুর্য অথবা জ্ঞান সম্পূর্ণ যে জিনিসগুলো দেখার কথা আছে অথবা ম্যানার্স যেগুলো দেখা আছে এগুলো দেখা যায় না এখন আপনারা তো আলহামদুলিল্লাহ এনগেজিং উইথ ম্যানি 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 পিপল ফ্রম ডিফারেন্ট ফেথ এবং আলহামদুলিল্লাহ দে আর লট অফ পিপল আসলে আপনার কাছ থেকে ইয়া শাহাদা নিরা আপনার কাছ করতে এখানে আমরা কিছু যে একটা আসিকটা আমরা এফেক্ট করেন না অথচ বারবার মানুষ কিছু এফেক্ট করে ইজ সাউন্ড বি ইউ নো লাইক যেমন কিরকম মানে এখানে হোয়াট ইউ থিংক ইজ দ্য কেস আউট সে পার্সোনালি ফর एग्जांपल পিপল গট डिफरेंट এক্সপেরিয়েন্স ফার্স্ট অফ অল হোয়েন আই লুক এট এ নন মুসলিম পয়েন্ট অফ ভিউ দে আর লিভিং দে হ্যাভ এ সার্টেন ওয়ে অফ লাইফস্টাইল বাট হোয়েন দিস কোরআন হ্যাজ বিন ইন্ট্রোডিউস টু देम আই মিন পিপল হোয়েন ফাইন্ড ইন্টারেস্ট দে কাম এন্ড টক টু আস অ্যাবাউট কোরআন and the when they learn about quran and they actually they have no escape route other than accepting the quran as a word of allah and then following the process uh, i surprise to see that uh, we have lack of knowledge about quran our holy book which we should uh, have not only just recited we should understand the meaning and quran actually never said uh, to just to read actually actually start with read but every time he said he said afala yatadabbar afala yatafakkar afala yaqilun ponder upon it think about it so whenever quran talks about uh, a famous verse i like it in surah al-anfal allah said those dem and daf are those who do not use reason so actually allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given us the fitra uh, the intellect to use it and not to so for example when these people come to us so they have certain stuff they're going in their life and they know they're not doing right which is obviously the fitra is telling them that they need something they need some food so what are the food is, is it the food no that's not the food the food for the soul so whenever they connect with the word of the creator for example when we talk about moin uh, myself abdullah when we talk about quranic miracle which is one of the uh, i mean uh, a, a famous things obviously in the in the world that it hit the intellect of all level So imagine if you look at all these people who are coming to Islam those are very intellectual people they're studying in Oxford Cambridge University so imagine a person who is uh, dictating the words of Allah in 7th century but he's thinking the intellect of 14th century so uh, i mean the only option you take uh, is that either you take uh, the word of god or you, either you don't take a uh, word of man now it's very easily falsifiable that it cannot be a word of man it has to be a word of god then if it is a word of god then you cannot take it lightly very simple that's two way route so whenever we apply the falsification test for example uh when we talk about a 7th century uh intellect so a person who known to be unlettered but we don't say he's not intelligent he's an intelligent person but he's an unlettered prophet so quran actually addresses a nabiyul ummi a, a let i mean unlettered a man and he wala taqutu bi yaminik mean see never known to be uh, write anything or read anything so uh, so, <coughs> so god given this revelation now someone is claiming he's got revelation so those people who said uh, i don't want to follow him they have to have some ground so they wanted to tell okay he might be lying but then again if we apply the test these people given him title of al amin asadi so they can't call him a liar now second proposition he could be making it up but he could be a crazy person so if i make a four five prediction and if let's say four come true and one come wrong yeah that's that's a coincidence right but whenever all this prediction come true and his lifestyle that doesn't mean to be 
meant that obviously he's a lying and deluded and a crazy person then you have another option left so what are the option that either is a word of god or not now quran actually uh, coming from a timeless authority which is creator the almighty uh, now the quran has to feed for all the time so quran when bringing the statement like uh, <coughs> Uh, that uh, everybody uh, Allah will create through the uh, many min yumna and the nutfa and alaqa. This stage has been explained in the Quran in fourth and seventh century ago. A man who is going against the convention of the notion of Greek understanding, which is they have understanding that a baby is born through only the sperm from the male cell, and the female they only carry the baby. But Quran going against the convention, against going the Greek, and Quran saying uh, a term used amshaz in Surah Insan that it has to be mixture with the male and female sperm, and going against the convention of notion. Now, obviously, the science has been developed, and we know that Quran actually correcting the historical errors, medical errors as well. So even if we look at any historical error, I'll give many example. I can bring out one of the example of. Uh, uh, the Haman is the minister of Pharaoh. Again, I'm just moving from one subject. So whenever we look at Haman, minister of Pharaoh, uh, this has been against going against the Bible. Bible actually told that Haman is a minister of Jargis, a Babylonian king. But Quran actually is saying no. Haman is a minister of a Pharaoh, which is uh, the Pharaoh, which is a dynasty in the Egyptian king. And King Jargis, obviously where Bible is mentioned, he is a, a Babylonian king. So complete, Quran is completely talking different. Now, the time when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, re given the Quran, obviously, obviously we believe Muslim that this is a revealed book. So he given this uh, oral transmission, and he going against the convention. Now, in f the by the time he given this, the language has been dead, right? So now, in 18th century, end of 18th century, uh, a study called Egyptology. Many scientists uh, actually looking to this. So one of the famous uh, scientists, his name is Maurice Bokhail. So he traveled to uh, Egypt, and uh, I'm cutting it short. It's quite a long process. So he actually examined the body of Pharaoh, and also he looking at the hieroglyphics. So Quran mentioned two statements: the Haman is the minister of Pharaoh. Through hieroglyphics, the language has been revived, and they agreed now. Scholar anonymously agreed that Haman is the minister of Pharaoh. So Subhanallah, Inshallah. Prophet peace be upon him, 14th century onwards, and uh, we Muslim, we are not reading this. We are reading something which is a fake story. Which uh, I mean, law of journals. We read law of journals, but it doesn't give you for, uh, like I said, mentioned that it's food for heart, soul, and mind. But whenever you read those stuff, it actually hitting you where I'm going because this is the message from my Creator. Am I connected with Him? So this is one of the things happening when, when we talk to the non-Muslim. Okay, so I'm going to come back to you. Yes, please. I'm going to go to Moin Bai. Moin Bai, you, in your stores, <coughs> you meet all kinds of people. You've got young Muslim boys, it could be girls and other, you face those cases. They want to know about Deen, they want to know about Quran. What kind of question they ask you guys? Um, and does it really, give, do, you, do you get surprised? Why is Muslim asking you these kind of questions? Um, in the Da'a store, it's ideally purpose for uh, non-Muslims. Um, educating about Islam, spreading the message, uh, diminishing the ignorance about Islam. Uh, but we do get, um, surprisingly, significant amount of Muslims inquiring about Islam. Um, most visitors would co like to come up and get a free copy of this and that, ideally Qur'an. Um, although then, uh, we are not against giving out Qur'an, but and because it's come, all the money comes from some charity, and obviously there is a, so much amount, how much we can give out. So we'd ask, uh, do you have a copy of Quran? If you'd have it, because it's ideally for non-Muslims, so we'd ask you to get a copy, because it's very easy for Muslims to just get a copy from bookshop uh, here and there, uh, mosque. And, but non-Muslims, they wouldn't go out of the way and then buy a Quran. So, and we, I'm sometimes pretty surprised when I come across people of different age and gender would say, oh no, I don't have a copy of Quran, or many um, youngsters or who seem to be born and kind of raised here, maybe even adults would say, no, we have a copy of Quran, but we, ha we don't have an English translation. And, and they kind of feel that they do not have, they have a relationship in terms of reading it, but as for the other two implementation, which uh, Azizul mentioned, which but is I'm surprised. Well, they, they, could, they could have gone to 
They could have gone to establishment. They could have gone to the mosque. Nothing, yeah. They could have gone to the madrasa. They could have gone to any place. Uh, there are bookshops, right bookshops there. around. Okay. But um. can you imagine? Actually, there are those two or three. There are actually keep an excess fund. They probably think I'm like a little much. They will look down on me. Inspired. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to mm. come back to you. Your brothers and sisters, there is a number there in the screen you could see. Inshallah, you can call us. You can share your views and put your uh, uh, question to us as well directly, Inshallah, who this. So there is a number there. So you can call us, Inshallah, directly from anywhere uh, you're watching us from, Inshallah, who this. Okay, so what kind of, give me an example, what kind of question they ask and why do you think they ask so, us? Uh, give us two cases. They, they would have uh, cases where oh no uh, we have a copy but we uh, we don't have an english copy and uh, uh, i don't know the meaning and that's why my relationship with quran and eventually islam is okay. very weak uh, can we get a copy and then we probably give copy they would sometimes make donations as but well. do you have do you find uh, any muslim coming them, not as a believers do you find anyone like questioning his belief instances when they would be muslims or they would say they i used to be a muslim but i'm no more practicing so and the there were two kind of extremes we face so um we met a guy about about a month ish ago. So he came up. He was walking by. He's not from London. He was walking by with his uh, family or someone. He stopped by because we were giving our Quran. He just wanted to find out what we were doing. Uh, we gave our Quran. He said uh, he's not ready to take the book uh, because he it doesn't make sense to him. Uh, he's not ready to take it. And then when we would ask, why you not? Uh, why do you think so? So he revealed that he used to be, he was born in a Muslim family, that's why he became a Muslim, but he no longer believes in the idea of Islam, and hence he denounced Islam in terms of Muslim. Uh, he would say, uh, DT, the, he's unable to, he, he said he was unable to relate why there are so many problems going on in the world and why God is not doing This is one of the key aspects of many, uh, agnostic so to me it was more of an agnostic idea because when I would not discuss the whole uh, conversation we okay. have had because that was very long and very interesting uh, but when he uh, the um, in a nutshell uh, the conversation then lead to that the man accepted that he actually thinks that there is God but he's actually not um, in good terms so he is not accepting the uh, establishment of God or the existence of God so uh, what was your answer then? Well, how did you answer was agnostic uh, he was agnostic due to things going around and ideally um, what we kind of came uh, learn from the experience was that he was not given the right message of Islam or the right message of God's existence in the first so God's uh, Rububiyyah, Allah's Rububiyyah and Allah's Uluhiyya and then the, all the qualities <coughs> of God, yeah. uh, what we know as Asma Sifat. Uh, that's because um, to many men, including mostly atheists, uh, they believe uh, God, is un God cannot be just. If God was just, then so many problems would not be happening mm. because for them, the limitation is to what they see, uh, not what they don't see. Which is uh, understandable from an intellectual per perspective, but man is the only creation on earth who can actually not only believe in the seen, but also has the capacity to believe in the unseen. Because there are so many things we haven't seen, but we believe in facts and based on uh, knowledges on based on true facts. Uh, so, can you give so us some examples? Him, so, for him, um, they were like, okay, if there is so much of problem, then why would how would God be? Fair, but he, uh, they would not be accepting that the idea is God's fairness or God's justice is not only to be established only in this world or in the earth, but obviously God will establish his judgment and his justice in the hereafter. So, um, and the other lady which I was go going to pull the parable of, uh, she had a, she, used, she came from a Muslim background, she was very practicing, she said. And at somewhere down like a few years back, she lost her younger sibling. She was very s sad about it. She was very close to her sibling and she just couldn't take it. And her point was, God has so much, so many other people to take. Why did God have to take my sister? And so a lot of things gave her... So it's one of the emotional things, isn't it? It was very just emotionally like driven and hence she ended up in an agnostic area where, but she came up, she, she kind of started believing that she that God doesn't exist because of the reasons that God was unjust and if God cannot be unjust hence God doesn't exist but she failed to realize that God's promise of just or his justice is not justice would not be served in the earth well you'll see cases where there will be God will um, Allah will give you something and then take you 
something else which we call justice as well which is justice but the ultimate justice would not be served here because yeah, the question comes here if she doesn't believe in god why is she blaming god itself exactly and then w during the argument we did say that if they either you have to believe in god to blame god or if you blame god then you have to believe god and if you don't believe god then you can't blame god then the case where you lost your sister or your sibling um, is invalid that you can't blame someone who you don't believe in. So it's very, um, it doesn't make sense to say, oh, uh, I broke my leg due to the step, but actually the step doesn't exist. <laughs> and then she kind of agreed at the end of the conversation that um, actually I'm not an atheist, but I'm kind of just sad with the, everything that happened to me. And she left with an agnostic idea with a belief in or kind of a belief back in God, mm -hmm. where she is now. Actually, very far away from the Islam itself. Very far away. Actually, I'm going to come back to you again. The Quran is the word of God, right? Of course, we all believe that. But after say that the the discovery of scientific uh, 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 emotions, or to be honest, the expansion of uh, um, universe or, or uh, recompositions, all that stuff. If you could tell us about a few of this. Uh, yeah, I mean, <coughs> for example. Uh, make it short so we can say a few. Yeah. Um, so I mean, we've got mathematical, numerical side basically. I got um, historical prediction as well. So I would say Quran actually historically correct a lot of historical mistakes as well. So a lot of historical mistake Quran corrected. Uh, for example, uh, one of the uh, historical error was uh, the body of Pharaoh. So according to the old biblical scripture, no no mention of his body would be preserved. The claim has been made in fourth, uh, seventh century, but it couldn't find at the time of the claim has been made in the Quran. But late in uh, Alexandria, in uh, end of seventeenth century and prior to eighteenth century, we found the body of uh, Pharaoh, and which is examined that he uh, he drowned. So they actually examined his body and found him drowned. So Quran make a claim claim seventh century before. I mean, and six, that was uh, for six, a claim which was two and a half thousand yeah. years before, yeah, before yeah. for that time. For that time. So, Quran coming the historical side. Another side of, uh, I would say, uh, a numerical miracle, which is absolutely stunning. Uh, give you an example. For example, uh, if I look at chapter number 57, uh, called Iron, Al Hadith. So, it got 29 verse. The chapter 57, 29 verse. So, if we multiply 29 with the 57, we coming with the result of 1653. Now 1653, keep this uh, number in your mind. Now whenever we put into the slide, let's say 57, right? So if, if you put a slide in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and up to 57, if we add them, all of them up, it's coming to 1653. It cannot be coincident. You see, someone is dictating these affairs. And Muhammad Islam is continuously reassured by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is every time he's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dictating him he was saying he, you never known to be a, a knowledgeable person you never known to be this you never known to be a capable person of delivering that because you are an Nabi al -Ummi. so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through his uh, divine wisdom he was dictating the Quran to him so the question is whether either Quran is a word of God or not. Now you can falsify any claim, you can testify, and the best people can be challenged. Quran is a seventh century. You might think why you are saying only seventh century? Because people that time they are the master in Arabic language. Right? Now language has been degenerated. People use Arabic with English terminology. Back then, Arab means uh, desert, the barren land. People have their own unique language and that is only the reason why why Quran revealed in Arabic because this language has not been corrupted because of that land never conquered by anybody because there is nothing there is a barren land. So the language Allah chose, that's why Allah chose uh, Arabic language. So because it will give a clear precision, a clear understanding of what the term means. Now looking into numerical side, whenever we look at uh, linguistic side of the things, whenever we look at any uh, composition of chapter, for example, if we look at uh, Surah Baqarah, uh, as you know that this chapter has been revealed in nine years time. 
and nine years time is not is coming oral so it's not that people uh, prophet sallallahu is writing these verses down so everything in memory and the arrangement is memory as well so there's two things happening one is revelation coming and second is arrangement doing oh everything in the memory so this verse coming okay this verse after this this is this and the nine years it's been compiled and it was written late now the check is gone through the law of scholars are going through about the quranic surah baqarah chapter so we find 286 verse it got nine section there so nine section we have a faith and belief the first section the last section is faith and belief so whenever you look at the first portion of the surah baqarah is and it sums up with the last section and this is chronologically matching with the first and last second with last second third with the last third fourth with the last fourth and in the middle allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses a word called astawa with the middle nation middle way because at that time the qibla the direction of the qibla has been changed so this event has been allah announcing in a way that it's a very special way subhanallah so there's a precision so so whenever we look at full ring with this chapter this full ring within have got nine ring there so imagine we have a one ring and then we have nine ring there within this nine ring every every box has which each ring so another ring say for example if you look at uh, this word called middle uh, stava is this the word middle so whole chapter mentioned only once now guess where we found it we found it 143 which is exactly in the middle so you can't just write something okay i'm thinking okay where shall i put right and it has to be Cohe uh, linguistically cohesion as well has to match with the ijaz which is inimitable inimitability now we find one ring mm, in the center we find the middle nation then within a single ring we find another ring which is ayatul kursi so where allah is actually telling his expression how is he so there's two types of expression for example one type of expression is affirmation and one is negation so we were saying in negation la taquzu sinatun wala naum neither slumber overtakes him nor sleep and it if you look at this uh, verse has been tabulated breakdown into nine section again this verse this section first one matching with the last second one with the match last second so i mean this is incredible whenever it's you study blowing, i mean actually. mind blowing i mean sometimes my i've been stuck on that whenever i see this subhanallah is, and so so uh, so imagine shadar man shabla for year now yeah what we read in it if we don't know how it works, yeah. sometimes it's difficult to understand because it's not, so you read first part, it's not complete. Mm -hmm. You have to go to the last part to make a good sense of it. Yeah. Isn't that how it works, isn't it? Yeah. So almost like if you don't finish the whole surah, it will not give you a, a full understanding. Quran actually, I would say, Quran actually uh, on that question is a very, very important question you raised because Quran actually not saying to just uh, read like a novel. Quran actually prepare you because Quran actually is saying before you touch this book go and do Udu and put your sincere attention it's not saying to read it's saying to reflection and tadabbur so whenever you tadabbur up, ponder upon it you can't just just ignore the stuff so you actually look into the sign so Quranic terminology is called ayat ayat means sign so there is a misunderstanding in uh, translation people say verse verse is actually not the right understanding this Quranic terminology is called ayat which is sign so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying a sign reminding me a sign and he was actually telling you can you do it so he was talking to our heart so for example uh, how subha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given us understanding when we talk to a non-believers they don't understand the concept of Allah so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in uh, chapter 52 verse 35 he said am kulikum min ghayri shayng amumul khaliqun so he given us amazing understanding uh, on th that verse. Sorry. I'm going to come back to you. Yeah. We'll go for a small break, inshallah. Okay, no problem, so we'll continue from that. Thank you. Yeah, brothers and sisters, I'm sure you are enjoying, inshallah. Don't go too far away. Um, we'll continue, inshallah, after the break. We'll talk about the discovery of uh, scientific facts about Islam and, and Quran, inshallah. Aziz, stay with us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome back again. Amra, we rushed you guys because it was really interesting talking about Quran, a miracle of the Quran. 
and আমরা আসলে এইটাই অভাব লাগে যে আমাদের বাচ্চাদের অথবা আমরা আসলে কুরআন বুঝতে আমরা আসলে কোনো কোনো ভুল করলাম আপনারা আমাদের জীবনটা আসলে কুরআনিক অন্যা এজন্য দেখা যায় যে আমাদের বাচ্চারা আপনার মসজিদ মাদ্রাসা তো ইয়া আপনারা তারা দাওয়াত তো লগিয়া কুরআন নি রা আপনারা অথবা আপনারা প্রশ্ন বারাগা করা ইনস্টেড অফ গোইং টু দ্য এস্টাবলিশমেন্ট এটা কিছু কারণ আছে আমরা তো চিন্তা করে দেখি যে এখানে তারা ইফদল যে প্রশ্নগুলো তারা আর তারা অনেক সময় দেখা যায় যে অনেক মারা গেছে মারা যাওয়ার কারণে আপনারা তারা দিন থেকে ফুরি গেছে এটা ভেরি চিন্তা করা দেখা যায় আমরা আমরা গরিব মালা কিন্তু অন্য আপনার এখন নাইলে এমন যদি নাও হয় তো এখানে তারা নামাজ ফুরেন না এখানে তারা আমরা লগে একলগে আপনার মসজিদও যায় না বিভিন্ন প্রশ্ন আমরা চিন্তা করা দরকার রাখি আপনার এখন আমাদের যে যেইভাবে আমরা শিক্ষা দিলাম ইসলামটা আমার অনুরোধ হোক আমার যারা আমাদের যারা লিডার যারা আসুন অথবা ইমাম যারা আসুন স্কলার যারা আসুন যে উই নিড টু ফাইন্ড এ ওয়ে টু এনগেজ উইথ দেম যে তারা যে ভাষা বুঝে ও ভাষার মতো বুঝে দিব তারা আপনার তারা যে স্কুলে যায় ইউনিভার্সিটি যায় তারা তারা কিন্তু প্রশ্ন বিভিন্ন প্রশ্নগুলো আর যেগুলো আপনার মানে ধর্ম থেকে অনেক দূরে আপনার আপনার আমি যারা দেশে বড় হয়েছি আপনার আমাদের প্রশ্নগুলো আমার আসেন না তারা প্রশ্ন কিন্তু বিভিন্ন মুখী প্রশ্নগুলো আপনার তারা আসলে কিছু বিশ্বাস করনে ওয়ালা নাই যারা প্রশ্নগুলো করা এই জন্য তারা মোরকম ভিজ হওয়ার মানে বেশি চান্স বেশি তো এই জন্য আমরা খুব চিন্তা করি যে তারার এ খেলা আপনার ঠাকুর দেওয়া যায় ইজ ভেরি ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট আমরা একটু চিন্তা করা দরকার আমাদের চিন্তা আমাদের অ্যাপ্রোচ আমাদের লেখাফরা বিভিন্ন জীবিগুলো আমরা করাম বর্তমানে লেস ফাইন্ড দ্য ওয়ে টু এনগেজ টু দ্য ওয়াইড কমিউনিটি ডেফিনেটলি তো আমরা আল্লাহ পড়েছিলাম যে আপনার কোরআন লাগে এখানে আমাদের লিঙ্ক নাই অনেক সময় আমরা কোরআনগুলো ফরি আমাদের নিজের বাসায় অনেক সময় আমরা আসলে আধা ঘন ফুরিয়া ঠায়ার হয়ে যায় আমরা আসলে বুঝি না অনেক সময় এইগুলো কারণটা কিন্তু আপনার অনেক সময় আমরা বাদ দিলাই বলে না আমাদের ওই তো নাই অনলি দ্য পার্সন উইল বি দ্য আওয়ার ইমাম জেন স্কোলার তারা জানবা আপনার সো সামহাও আমরা তারও খান্দা থুইয়া তারা খান্দো এটা থুইয়া আমি ফ্রি ইউ নো আই এম ফ্রি আই এম ডুইং এভরিথিং আই ওয়ান্ট ডু সো এটা একটা বুল দাঁড় ওটা আসলে এটা একটা নিজে নিজের আপনার আল্লাহ মানে রাস্তা থেকে ফুরাই দিতে গেল সো লেস লেস গো টু ফাইন্ড আউট ফি মোর থিংস রিগার্ডিং কোরআন এবং খিলা বুঝাই যায় আপনারা তো মানুষের বুঝাই রা আপনার আপনার যে স্টাইলে বুঝাই রা আপনার এই বুঝটা তারা বুঝিয়ে তারা মুসলমান ওর আপনার এটা তো আমরা সেম সেম স্টাইলটা যদি আমরা গরু ইউজ করি অথবা আমাদের ইয়ংস্টার ইউজ করি আপনার মে বি দিস উইল মেক সেন্স টু দেম সো আপনারা কীভাবে গিম ইয়ার ইজি ওয়ে আপনারা তারা খিলা ইসলামটা বুঝাইন অথবা আপনার আমরা আমরা ইয়ংস্টার খিলা বুঝে দিতে পারবো আপনার এনিওয়ান কোরআন আই থিঙ্ক it's where he said uh, reading and then reading is very important where i was probably that's where i ended probably stopped probably while ago reading quran is very important but after reading comes pondering and implementation which quran insists people on so reading tadabbur which is pondering uh, and then implementation so it took abdullah ibn umar to 13 years to finish surah baqarah which is the longest surah in the quran but if we come across any um office of alim or hafiz now they will probably take a few hours or less than mm. an hour maybe just to finish the whole surah but what he meant to finish t- taking it 13 years to finish it is not only reading it but pondering upon each and every verses and not only pondering upon each and every verses he implemented each and every verses into his life which means as he said verses is actually the ayah which is the signs so all that the ayahs were suggesting him towards so i think uh, reading and pondering of the quran is very important and implementation it could be even one single verse or else the smallest or the few of the smallest little surahs we know but looking into the quran from a um from a perspective that today uh, we are going going to learn it just not for the sake of reading it but also for the sake of learning it and hence implementing it onto our life it's not only the job of the our ulamas or the imams or the local Islamic leader just to read it and read it out read it back to us and for us to just learn a few handful amount of surahs but to implement the all walking so we should be a walking talking Quran okay in terms so of imagine when we have our Jewish Sikhs have our money Muktab taki suit of color and the same style can to all the show the masjid go jayegula say they already teaching them yes can to ikta to dekha zar the ikta the understanding of Islam tin tin taki anna only thing is you can read is Maybe enough there are, you kind of get a bit of gist of learning it but it should be it shouldn't be limited to only to the maktab if we limit learning quran only in the maktab okay maybe learning the tajweed and makharij that's fine but implementation should not only be limited to the school we go to in terms of 
uh, Quran. So w if we go to the evening or weekend class for learning Quran, it should not be only limited there. It should be part of our daily life. So how we do okay. that. Imagine you're 15 years old. Okay. Afne Mokhtobe Gusun probably four years. Imagine four years, five years. Afne Quran is enough. Afne, you didn't learn Islam there, did you? You probably so, learn the uh, etiquette and the... Yeah, these are basic right. things, basic for life. But this yes. will not take, this will not make you an Islamic lifestyle. Because of the people who are living in the world, the majority, 99% of the young people are actually learning like this. Right. We need to think differently. We need to think differently. Basic. Basic is the Asma al-Husna. We need to think differently. Basic Tawheed. Afnar halal and haram basic stuff na de afnar the to roll jala sole roll sole roll sole roll sole roll. He amra diota khora mokro khora mokro khora. So what do we? What so doing as he said, doing for the sake of doing it would not help actually. Uh, you, it should and obviously it it should aid your uh, life as a from an Islamic perspective going to maktab. But I think um, we should be try we should um, the education should be in at home. There should be space in, uh, for us to learn from the mosque every time we visit. So there should be um, teaching and learning engagement um, circles, maybe. Uh, and one of the key ways to do is, the more you invite people to us, good. It gets not so. It, this uh, your call is not only directed to us who you are directing it to, but it's ideally for your own ears. So if you are calling someone to us, good, whether he or she listens to you or not. You are the one who's li your ears are the one who is listening it to it first. So it should come into your uh, own actions at some point, uh, or slowly, or with uh, part of this is this is this should be the part of the process. Uh, in terms of feeding it into your life, it should it can't be done um, from a very indivi individual perspective. So it should be the work of the um, home. Should be the work of the circles, maybe the community, whether he's mixing yeah. with his I friends. I think uh, one or of the things just need to add on that issue, uh, when it comes to uh, the oneness and the knowing the Creator, so we need to rationally understand because Islam is the only monotheistic religion, because we actually attribute Creator in a way that uh, is is a unique because and that makes sense to every human being, because the one who made the creation, the Creator, the he given us the same, so he said. Uh, uh, so were they created of nothing or they themselves are the creator so his reasoning that uh, did you uh, create it by yourself or do you come from nothing or they hold the universe come from nothing yeah. did he create okay. yourself things like uh, that the reason I'm asking this question yeah. is yeah. 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 Classroom with, the, with people with a different faith yeah a lot of freedom as they talk about their faith he's going to be very deluded so that's the reason so that's why we I have to know the basics yeah so, so that's, that's why you're starting yeah. with basic so I'm, I'm going point. through with the basic topic okay, so that uh, whoever watching they could uh, take and uh, take a note as well so first of all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in surah 52 verse 35 where the created of nothing or they themselves are the creator so can universe come from nothing so we know nothingness cannot create something can it give birth to itself universe cannot give birth to itself I cannot give birth to myself so the third thing is uh, it created by a cre created. So those who create us, when I make a create a book, I'm not inside the book, I'm outside the books. So the creator, which is um, omnipotent, he's transcendent. So we say he's outside the universe of the frame of the universe. So I would say he's eternal with no beginning and everlasting with no end. And then obviously he given his uh, two side of uh, attribution. One is negation and one is affirmation things like that he can do and things can, uh, he can't do. Let's say, Kulhu Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, he's one. Yeah, Allahu Samad, he's self-sufficient because uh, if anyone, any, any, uh, any, anybody who eats food, sleep, God, uh, depend, any dependent agent will not be God. For example, if I say, uh, love uh, in a Christianity, the understanding of the Creator, they say Jesus is God. How can a person be God who eats food? And Quran makes uh, ex actually make a very simple reasoning that they say they both ate food and they sleep. Yeah. So how can be a God who who is running this world? You see. So and so the first two verses are affirmation and third one and the fourth one is uh, negation. So if you look at linguistically, it's got uh, the information is said in a way the beautifully. First two is affirmation, third and fourth is a lam yalid walam yulad walam yakulahu 
he is not begotten sorry he is begotten not, uh, so he begets not begotten and there is nothing like him so whenever i say creator if i see creator is like an idol he cannot be a creator creator is unlike him because if i think he's a creator he's not a creator because i am controlling am i in my imagination in my view Human so mind yes think about so the we say al hayy al qayyum uh, i mean uh, this is uh, i mean if you look at uh, uh, surah uh, ayatul kursi basically it gives a, a clearation that la takhuzu sinatun wa la nawm lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard his, his throne extended from heavens to earth and things like that he he knows this universe what is happening one of the things uh, people think okay why cannot be more than one creator so we know very simply surah al-anbiya allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says law kana fihi ma alihatun illa allah la fasadat had there been more than one creator into the existence the world will be ruined and the chaos and corruption imagine you you if, if you me and you are in the business no even if you have two kings in absolutely, the in absolutely. uk what's going to happen absolutely. Prime minister yeah, yeah happen. someone will say i, I want to kill him chaos. in in 10 yeah, yeah, of course, of chaos course. So, Common sense, yeah. so uh, the simple now the and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, that uh, that do you know how i created from a drop of water and i created you from nothing and i will i will bring back you again if i can do it once why cannot i can't i do it and now this creator giving you evidence after evidence after evidence after evidence and and allah saying are you going to be heedless are you going to be like a transgressor now imagine the only things left to you between creator and you is because the death the death when you destined will come and then you will meet the creator and that promise will come, come true. true right now question is here why should i deny now why shouldn't i prostrate why shouldn't i put my head to the uh, up allah said wala tamshi fil ardi marha why don't you walk upon the earth with mm. with your um, pride. Uh, pride and <coughs> things like that humble since come and sincerely submit and that's what islam was all about and then whenever we address that quran actually feed for every human beings it will talk to the heart of the people imagine somebody i let me relate to a story a lady she is a teacher in cambridge university she became muslim after reading when just only one verse she was in tense moment and she grabbed the quran from one of our brothers and she opened the first verse it came to her is surah taha it say surah taha sab anzalna alayka al quran li tashqa that this quran has not come to distress you imagine someone is in distress and she's opened the book and she say the creator talked to her straight away so quran actually make you stress free so whenever we read quran we try to uh, understand read the tafsir understanding the uh, verses so i would say to encourage everyone read uh, quran i would say whoever reads english i would uh, recommend this translation it's a very good translation is uh, completely unlike uh, any translation i have read before is by sheikh abdul halim oxford university press uh, he is a linguistic and he studies the lughat lughat al arabiya and uh, absolutely fantastic it's like a novel very easy, can, to uh, very easy. Uh, please buy one and uh, i'm sure you will not regret it because it's like a okay, novel you can that's fine yeah that's yeah. okay and um, yeah so i think where he wanted to touch up is um, because everything falls apart if the idea of islam is not there or if the idea of allah Because god is not yeah, there yeah you know like translations are t- uh, can i hold on the, the translations are different but there are some translations that are easy to read so you yeah. use the easy ones i think uh, th- yeah. there are the very recent ones like one of this uh, by professor abdul halim and abdul halim yes by dr mustafa al khattab these are very contemporary yeah, yeah, so it's very true. easy to relate to so you are cut um, you in, in no. one of us so foundation of islam builds upon the aqida so if aqida is not in Absolutely. the right place Absolutely. then other nothing else would make sense Tawheed. why it, what's been made halal or what's been made haram wouldn't make sense and Absolutely. would not be there would be so many things which would not make sense to us and then we would not be able to attain to it yeah. unless the v- concept of god makes sense to us mm. would not be able to jump onto the other bits and it would be absolutely, absolutely irrelevant mm-hmm. unless the oneness of god and god's existence makes sense to us for that uh, in terms of where we were uh, from my last part of the conversation where uh, maktab everything uh, like learning quran tajweed these are all important but at the same time we need to um, feed ourselves with the idea of god if this is where you want to be like for muslims um the oneness and existence of god is very important once you understand the importance and the tawhid the concepts of tawhid the yeah. aspects of tawhid which is tawhid al-rububiyah that god is the owner god is the lord he is here and he is the director 
So he's got the power in terms of he's the Malik, he's the Rabb, and he's the Tadrib, so who directs the world. And because of this, uh, he is the one who is worthy of worship. Yeah. So he's the one who is worthy of worship because of all the favors he has bestowed upon us and for being all the other, all the, for being so merciful on us and also understand his qualities and his attributes which he has described in the Quran with his very beautiful names. Uh, so once we build this onto our understanding, then other bits will fall into its place, like revelations would make sense. Then I think all I just the want to add, uh, just before you start with the revelation, I want to pass it to him again. Okay, so uh, we, have, we have a short time now, yeah, so let's uh, try to uh, so wrap one, it up. One of the uh, amazing <laughs> things about our, within our, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned a famous, very, very famous verse in, in uh, Surah Fussilat, he said, سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا وَفِي أَفَاقِ أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ means uh, uh, I have uh, given you the signs in, in the horizon and within yourself until it manifests to you. So there is a lot of sign. For example, we're living in a fantastic world which is absolutely pristine by its, uh, its precision about uh, its construction. And uh, for example, if you look at uh, uh, within this universe, we have a certain percentage of oxygen, which we call a fine-tuned, how it's not just created and left it. Allah SWT will make it absolutely precision, for example. Now we have 21% of oxygen within the universe. If it is dropped down, let's say a remarkable amount, 5-6% down, then we'll all have suffocated and we'll, we'll die straight away. Imagine uh, also if there is no gravity, we would have flying. We would uh, could not hold the things here, absolutely. So the things, I mean, within our reality. Wouldn't that be good? We fly? Yeah. Ooh. I mean, within these things, our reality, we, uh, we have to be, uh, we have to think and why everything is so smooth in the creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that I, did you see any crack there? Did you see any hole there? Means what is referring that everything made up is absolutely precision. For example, even the believers, I'll just add, even yeah. the disbelievers, yeah. like they agree that agree. universe must have, although yeah. the process which is back, Big Bang they want to believe in, that everything came from nothing and which was started from a very little lot, which is also, there's a parable drawn in Quran, uh, but anyway, coming to the point of disbelievers, they also believe that all the which happened, the Big Bang, which happened by chance, is in its perfect and in its pristine condition because the universe is so beautifully, so in Absolutely. such a beautiful harmony yeah. that if there would be a God, they say, then he has to be those names would fit him or those qualities yeah. of him being over powerful and overshadowing everything and knowing all knowing befits the concept of God only because they to, to put things into existence in such beautifully and such yeah, yeah. in good harmony wouldn't be possible. It's amazing. I mean, I, I, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm lost already. Yeah, you I, know, mean, I don't know which way I to mean, go now. I mean, the terminology is there. Fatabarakallahu ahsan al is the amazing creator. I mean, okay. imagine. So let's uh, sum it up. So, mashallah, uh, we were talking about Islam and youth. How do we link you up with youth is important. So our parents are watching now, right? Yeah. We talked about Madrasha. We need to think about our way we teach our kids. Remember, Tarakan to Moshu, Tarakan to School of the University of the Jaida. Tarakan to Mansota Absolutely. The question is, I mean, I, I have a straightforward answer for them straight away. So there's some institution there. They can enroll their children. So one of the institutes by uh, Sheikh Ustad Dumar Ali Khan by Bayina Institute. They can learn and they can not only strong their faith, they can actually, they will have so much passion, inshallah, and by the will of Allah, that they will even p convey Islam. Basically, so, engage yeah, into engage in uh, Islam. So, Bayina Institute will be very helpful. And uh, there is uh, many, many websites which is called islamnoon.com. They got okay. a lot of. Uh, yeah. Educational no, they, they are actually they are amazing other scholars as well and the other sites they could yeah. put into. Of course, this is one of them. One of them and another one I, I wanted to mention. I actually look into his uh, work. It's amazing. He's a convert to Islam, revert to Islam. His name is Dr. Raymond Farid. So he He's wrote another a special scholar. Yeah, well, very very special scholar in uh, in language. It amazed you. So these things we need to know. Mm. Uh, he wrote a book called uh, Quranic Structure. Uh, coherence, uh, basically, symmetrical cohesion. 
Basamsa is another one. He wrote a miraculous language of the Quran. Uh, Abu Bakr Baqilani. So they are new uh, old and new writers. Are old and new writers. Yeah. Getting the knowledge yeah. in inevitable. Inevitable, yeah. They 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 you could go through your yeah. internet and subhanAllah, if yeah, you find the is, right people. Uh, but then again, you just you have to you be, have very, be, right cautious. Of, of have course, to be of very cautious about yeah. where you're getting your uh, knowledge from. Uh, you have to be very careful. Therefore, part of the terbiya is you guide okay. your whoever is dependent on you, guide them okay, in so the initial can, stage. Uh, can I give you a minute to say your last? If you, if you think we missed anything, would you like to add to it? Just a minute. I would, uh, my uh, advice would be, since advice would be, uh, if you'd like to follow the power of Islam, then try and equip, it, equip yourself with the best of knowledge and try and gain as much as knowledge as you can on Islam uh, from the right sources, definitely. Uh, visit your local mosque, try and uh, get into uh, any local... Um, many, there are many local um, activities or youth circles going on around, especially in London. So try and get a, your voluntary, uh, um, voluntary community work with your local uh, community. and try and engage with the good circles rather than uh, you, if you are a youth of the age of teenage then you are kind of there to differentiate between good and bad. Uh, obviously um, an idle mind is the ground, uh, ground uh, the working ground for shaitan so we should not let our mind idle and sit idle. We should try and engage ourselves with the study of Quran as much as we can and in groups, in groups of uh, either a local mosque or local scholars whoever we can find. And inshallah, try and implement first onto us and then also try and spread the message of uh, Allah, spread the message of Quran, spread the message of Rasulullah. So and inshallah, do the work of that. Fantastic message, mashallah. Um, you got a minute, Baya. Uh, just to wrap it up, uh, if you think you missed anything, just add to it. Yeah, um, I would say the best gift uh, to us uh, is, is Islam, I would say. Anybody, without a shadow of a doubt. And we received it free. SubhanAllah, if you compare with other faith people, they. Uh, we given it freely, subhanAllah. Uh, I mean, imagine if I was born in a Hindu family, subhanAllah. But Allah is so merciful. So I, 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 is is a f blessing and favor to us. So do not uh, lose this gift. Uh, please uh, engage yourself, study your Quran. What sort of believer are we if we cannot know our belief and our books? How if I cannot justify myself? How can I justify in front of the Creator on the day of judgment? I cannot justify myself. How can I know? So. Ha just concentrate on the study, get to learn, and I, I think bring the youth back to our studies. And this is the only way. This is fun. I'm not talking about this is a boring stuff. This is serious fun as well. This is actually, the, I, I would say, uh, do not uh, relate your Islam to on halal and haram, but rather talk to these, study these, and this will be a food for your heart, soul, and mind. I always say that. Because this is amazing study, even if you are hungry, but you're not hungry actually technically. Because when you read this stuff, it actually provides you food. Mm -hmm. And that's why we need two types of food, obviously. So I would say, brothers, engage with Go. I recommended by Ina Institute. Uh, no, no, there are different ones as well. So sure, definitely. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, but I, maybe your favorite one, of course. <laughs> yeah, I have favorite one. So <laughs> I, I know there's a lot of good scholars uh, in Islam and Go. A lot of good institution, uh, institution, definitely. lot of scholars. They. In, Engage with yourself, learn the faith, and keep us on our prayer, inshallah. And uh, any 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 help if you need, obviously you can contact with us. We work. Inshallah, in Islamic Awareness Project. I want to thank you guys firstly because you made your time for us. Um, sure, you could have done a lot of much better things, but actually people are watching you, and actually I'm sure they are proud of you guys as well, because this, you guys mm -hmm. are young, and actually the the message you are putting through. And with your actions, it's making the difference. Making the mm -hmm. difference to your dear brothers and sisters. I'm not going to a lot of people who are the end of the day, Egula Amadir Junnui. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to আমরা আমরা বাচ্চেন তোরে আসলে একবারে সমুদ্রের মধ্যে লেসি আপনার কিছু দিছি না তারা লগে যে তারা আপনার কিভাবে হাত রাইবে আপনার এই রকম এই রকম অবস্থা আমরা তারা দিলেছি লাগি আপনার তারা আসলে ওনার সময় তারার বিহেভিয়ারও তারা কথার মধ্যে তারা চলনের মধ্যে আপনার ইসলামের কোনো কিছু দেখা যায় না ওনার সময় এবং আমরা যারা বড় হই গেছি আমাদের মধ্যে ওনার ক্ষেত্রে দেখা যায় না আপনার 
আমরা অপোজিট খামগুলা করলাম আপনারা তো আমরা সকলে মিলে কি একটু চিন্তা করে যে আমরা ছোটো ছোটো ফ্যামিলি ট্রিপ করতাম পারি ফ্যামিলি ডিনার করতাম পারি টুগেদার এন্ড ল্যান্ড এবার ইসলাম ইন ডিফারেন্ট ডিফারেন্ট ওয়েজ আপনার শিক্ষিকার আছে আপনার খুব চমৎকার ভাবে খুব মজার জিনিসগুলো আসলে আমরা অনেক সময় মজার জিনিস খাই লাগে লুইয়া দিয়ে বাচ্চেন্ত কিন্তু ইসলাম শিখা লাগে আমরা আসলে ইয়ে দিতাম পারি না সো অনুরোধ হোম আপনারা এই খামগুলো করবা আমরা কিছু ভুল করিয়ে তাহলে আল্লাহ মাফ করে দেবেন ইনশাআল্লাহ আজিজ এবং আপনারা আমরা সকলে মিলে এখন দোয়া করি ইনশাআল্লাহ আমরা আপনার নেক্সট আপনার দেখাবো ইনশাআল্লাহ আসসালামু আলাইকুম রহমতুল্লাহি ওবরকাত